Welcome to a new video in my SAP GUI scripting series. In this video, I show how to extract the complete content of a grid view UI component. I'll be using Transaction SM12 um, as an example to extract the log entries from SAP. I will do this live from the beginning, taking more time to explain debugging, mainly to show how to approach a problem, how to use the debugger and the object browser. If you are new to GUI scripting, I recommend watching my first video in this series, which explains the basics of GUI scripting and addresses some of common issues. The Excel file I'm showing in this video is available for download, and you can find the link in the video description. So let's get started. So you have probably seen in the beginning of intro that I have one session where I opened a random document. Um, uh, so I'm actually locking something. And in the other session, um, I will go into the transaction SM12 uh, and I execute it to show my lock entries. Um, what happened with my thingy? Okay, so it's showing one entry now. Uh, yeah, it's showing one entry. And then that's uh, what I'm actually extracting. And uh, in this case, I'm trying to do it in a way that um, I don't really care how the this... Um, uh, control looks like, like, you know, the number of fields, uh, sorry, the number of columns or the number of rows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this um, uh, in a generic way and then basically just look at all the columns, extract all the columns and then extract every single cell in the um, in the list. I mean, now it's it's fairly simple because it's only one entry, but obviously so it's going to work with uh, um, well, any number of entries. Uh, and uh, the uh, the Excel itself is again really simple. I've just taken one of my uh, previous Excel file. So you specify the system ID and the client here. You click on the button, and then the um, um, the content will be extracted here. So obviously, row nine with the orange highlight is going to be the column headers, and the content will be here below. And um, the only thing the code doesn't do is it's not going to remove some of the older entries. So, um, well, either you need to add that to the code or just make sure that you delete everything which was uh, which is there in the in Excel. So you start with a with a blank document. Looking at the code, I mean, I've already deleted most of it because I want to do it live uh, on this video, but. Um, I'm not going to go through the most of it because I think I've touched on um, uh, many of these components in the past, but in a really short, really quick recap, um, clicking the button will start the um, start a method, which is called a start extract. And start extract in the code um, doesn't do much. It just gets the system ID from, uh, from the Excel file. And then it it uh, calls the uh, calls another method which is the run GUI script, which does most of the uh, well the actual work. And I left some of the code here, but we are going to populate the code here, which does the the actual extract from uh, from from GUI and paste the data into into Excel. And just like before, to make this work in your project references, you have to add. SAPFEWSE.OCX to the um, references. Otherwise, the code will not work. You will get all sorts of errors. Okay, fine. Um, before we can start working, I mean, the only uh, the f the first thing I want to do is um, is I want to create a script where I at least go into the transaction and um, I go into the and to the place where you know I can see the actual list and then I can see the ad actual entries and um, because I need to figure out how this co control is called you know this uh, view is grid view uh, we will see that it's actually called the grid view so how it's uh, how it's actually controlled or how what is it called in the um, uh, in the SAP GUI and the easiest way to find it out <clears throat> well at least the easiest way for me is to create a recording where you come to the transaction you execute and then you just click into the view so that action that mouse click basically gets recorded in the uh, in the macro so I, I go back to the initial screen and I oops sorry and I start the recording by <clears throat> first I need to select the uh, row and um, I just sorry the folder I'm calling it SM12 VBS, okay, that's fine. So record, and I always start a transaction with slash M, and um, 
I'm just going to leave the selection screen like this, but man, you can change, change the user ID to star if you really, really want. Okay, well, now we have two entries and I'm just going to click in the table. Uh, you can also, you know, select the rows if that's something that you want to find out how it is done in the, in the GUI. But that should be enough for me. So I'm going to stop the recording here and, um, and then look at the file. So the file is here. And it's not awfully complicated, as we can see. The, uh, the, the first part that we can ignore, because the, um, the exit is going to take care of it, is the creating all the objects and connecting to uh, the open session. The <coughs> actual stuff is here. So it's the um, maximize the window, call the transaction, change the user ID, uh, click the button, <coughs> and then I started clicking around. And, um, well, I, I expected a few more entries here, but it didn't happen for some reason. Anyway, it um, uh, it should be good enough for uh, uh, for this purpose. So what we can see here is that <clears throat> the control that we are looking for is called like this, and obviously that's going to be different um, um, in every transaction. So if like <clears throat> if you want to extract the uh, the content of a grid view from another transaction, then that would be different, but it's still going to be the same control or the same UI object, which means that the code that we are going to develop here, how to read the columns and how to read the, um, the individual cells are going to be exactly the same. So by just replacing the first few lines of the code or well, the, the lines that are responsible for getting to the screen where you have the view control, you should be able to reuse this script to extract any view control content from whatever transaction that you need. Okay, so let's uh, pick up this code and then move over to Excel. Oops, sorry, it's my Excel. Yeah, <clears throat> move over to the Visual Basic Editor. In the run GUI script uh, method, it's, um, well, it's fairly simple. I mean, we have some uh, variables the, the one thing which is important for this particular um, exercise is this one, this grid, uh, dim grid view as object. So I am going to create a, a separate variable for the grid view object um, because it just makes the code easier to read. We will see it in later. And then we, you know, make sure that we have um, uh, connected to a session and uh, we turn on the error handler and then we start the code. So I'm going to paste my code here. And this is some previous code, so I don't need this. And if you remember my, from my previous videos, you need to change this session to this object session just because I've defined my variables as, um, in a different way than SAP does. Uh, but that should be it. So again, this code will open up SM12 and you will be presented with the um, <coughs> Uh, with the grid view. And as I said here, I created this object um, to to store the grid view object um, or the variable, sorry, to create, store this grid view object. And the grid view object is, um, is this uh, session find by ID and the ID of the grid view. And well, anything which is here is, is the, the method of this object. But to store it, what we need to do is say, uh, set grid view equals and this line, this part of the code. Okay. <clears throat> and actually, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to create a breakpoint and I'm going to click on download. And what happened now is the transaction has restarted. Uh, we are on the same screen, so we haven't seen too uh, much. But in the code, um, what we can see that is the code got executed all the way here. And if if everything is right, then we should have our grid view stored in the grid view variable. So if I double click and add to the watch, then we can see that um, uh, it's not nothing. So it has a value and it is a type of um, I sub grid view target. And if you open it up, then you can see that it has uh, quite a bit of an information. So for example, it has column order. So you can see the um, the name of each of the columns. So, you know, client name, time, mode, client name, time, mode. 
so those are the internal IDs and not the titles. But if we start poking around a little bit more, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the current set row is zero, the current set column is G client. Yes, we have the Z <coughs> row number zero and the, and the column client. So that's all fine. And, uh, and if we go anything a little bit below, uh, maybe we can see the selected cells and the selected column. Well, we don't have anything really selected now. We don't have any selected rows either. <clears throat> but you can see that, um, you know, just by looking around in the, um, in the watch window, in why you are doing the debugging because as soon as you stop the debugging the the variable gets clear so that only works while whilst you are debugging um, you can find out pretty much about this uh, this object and this control so if you would want to see what are the 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 columns then you know that um, you can reference to these columns by you know grid view dot column order and and in brackets let's say you know zero it's going to give you the g client and also um, you can do it right here. So <clears throat> now your watch it says um, grid view, but if you want to get the the first column name, column order, so you can see that the column order is is actually an array, and the first item and all the items are indexed from zero are going to look like this. Now you see it's G client, so exactly what we have seen here. Yeah, G client. So again, um, if you are not sure how to address some of the the variables, especially if they are you know arrays, you can just type. You can just go around here in the in the change the uh, the watch expression, and um, you know start testing it out before you actually you know put the same code into uh, the same expression into the code. And if you do something wrong. Then you just say you know the object doesn't uh, support this property or method, so you know um, nothing bad is going to happen. So that's one way I usually test out how to get certain um, <clears throat> how to access some of the properties. I mean some of them are, are are really really simple, like you know changeable. So it's like changeable, and you accept true, and yes, it says true. So again. It's a yeah, it's a small prototyping <laughs> area in uh, within Visual Basic, but what you see here is you see all the attributes of the object. But the object not only has attributes, it also has methods, and and probably some of the most interesting stuff that we um, are looking for is actually in the methods. But how we are going to access, uh, access the methods? Well, <clears throat> we can't really do it here unless you start guessing. Um, so uh, going back to the code, you see set current cell, you know, um, one and g arch is is going to be a method because well, first clue is that it has parameters, and of course if you scroll down, there is not going to be a set current cell because there is selected cells and selected columns, but there's no um, a set current cell because that's a method. So for that, we can use the object browser, and then um, uh, you uh, click on libraries and you select the SAP library because we are only interested in the SAP objects. And the problem is that um, uh, I'm not really sure how to translate this object type into the into the classes in here, but you know just by looking around. Um, uh, there is usually a very good guess um, to you know how you can match the the type with the class. So we are definitely looking for a grid view or something. So and you start looking at the classes and um, you know GUI grid view. Let's look at this one. Okay, it has uh, and now you can see that the the properties have these icons. The method have these icons. So anything which is a property should be uh, available in the watch expression as well. So ACC description, oh, it's there, and this is there, and this is there. So um, yeah, actually, now you can be sure that you are looking at the same object. And uh, 
So now we can start um, looking around and then see if there is any method which looks familiar or, or looks um, something that we can make use of. And um, uh, actually, uh, for example, this one, get cell value. So this looks to be a very good one to extract all the cell values. And you can see that you need to pass a row as an ID or sorry, as a long, so as a number, and you need to pass the column as a string. So it doesn't really tell you how to use that. But uh, if you remember the, um, the column order, the column titles are represented as a string. So that probably gives you a clue that you would need to use these variables to access the column, uh, to define the columns. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've looked up these methods before. Um, and also, if you go a little bit further down, the get column, column, column titles, column tooltip, get column titles. So that's going to be another one which is um, uh, which would be useful to get the column titles. And again, it is expecting the column identifier as a string, which is here. So what we need to do is we need uh, to get the column titles. Um, just let me go just a little bit back. So now we would need to um, do the extractions in basically two parts. First, we need to get the column titles because for that we would use the get column titles methods. And then we would use another loop, well, actually two loops to get through all the cell values uh, by every single row and every single column. So let's deal with the column titles first. So again, uh, the function looks like get column titles and a column as a string and then you return you get an object back <clears throat> and for example it says g client so i can start playing around here so get column titles g client sorry client so again i'm you know doing this quick prototyping here so um, uh, well at least I'm getting back something which is a generic collection so at least I'm getting back something so I know that I haven't uh, messed up the expression and I go down and I see that <clears throat> okay this actually uh, this um, method returns a an array which has four items and it contains client 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 which is probably contains the column titles in different lengths. If you remember, uh, if you have ever maintained the domain, then <coughs> you maintain a like a short text and a longer text and a medium text. So th those will be coming at item one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so when I get the, uh, when I call the column titles, I would, let's say, get the, the first uh, string from the, uh, from this array and this is how I'm going to you know print the data back onto the onto the screen so going back to the code let's switch back to the code uh, I'm going to keep this running so uh, let's start a, <coughs> uh, a for loop so for i equals zero to um, so all the all the arrays in in the SAP object would will start from zero, and um, read view dot and actually I need to find out uh, the number of columns. Go back to the object browser browser, and I think there is a separate property for that. Oh, did I stop the recording? Uh, well, sorry, did I stop the debugging by editing it? I must have done it. So anyway, okay, we don't. Um, uh, we don't have the debugger anymore. Well, maybe what we can do, sorry. Maybe what we can do is just, you know, start the whole thing again. Okay. Stop. Come on. Ah, okay, fine. Syntax error. Anyway, we are going to figure out the other way. Uh, back to the object browser, um, and it was get. Oh, maybe it's something column. Column count. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> so that should be it. 
so column count is going to give me all the the, uh, the total number of columns let's go back to the code so uh, let's do a loop i equals zero to grid view dot column count and you do need to do minus one because it's a zero index one uh, and to close the i we just do next i and now we need to access the uh, the title so grid view and if you remember it was uh, we need the column order uh, method let's go back uh, column yeah the column order which is going to give me the the column ids but i need to pass that into get column titles okay so get get column titles and in here we pass we need to pass the the id of the the column like the technical name which comes from the column column order uh, array of the object so again it's grid view dot column order and it's um, and I pass the um, the variable of the um, loop so again okay double brackets and I, if you remember this gives me an array with the four titles and I just take the first one so that is going to give me the um, the title of the uh, column so I need to put it into a cell so the row index is going to be 9 because it's row 9 here and then the the column index is uh, the Excel columns are start from 0 so it's the variable of the loop plus 1 because I need to start from 1 onwards and I do value and that equals to the grid view okay actually I don't need this uh, function anymore or this line anymore okay I think that looks about right so let's delete this and then run hey it is working so we got the column titles extracted uh, to row 9 so that's good it's looking good so the next thing is going to be how, to, how we are going to extract the cell values. And I think we have already seen that. So basically it's get cell value. And now we need a, uh, first we need a row ID and then we need a column, column ID as a string. So the, we know how to get the column ID because we have just done that for the get column titles. And now we need the row, uh, row ID as well. And, um, I remember that there is yeah there is a property which called a row column a row count which is similar to column count so we need one loop which does 0 to row count minus 1 and need another loop which does uh, 0 to column count minus 1 and then for every single one of them uh, uh, called the get row sorry get cell value so get cell value function which returns the cell value as a string the way it is formatted on the UI so that shouldn't be too complicated so maybe i just also add some comments um sorry i'm also coding in java from time to time and uh okay extract the column headers column titles extract the content good so two um, si uh, two for loops and um, ah, I'm being a little bit lazy I'm just going to reuse this code so the first one is the is the first loop it doesn't really really matter if we are looking through lines or or rows 
it's going to be all the same. So the first one is uh, 0 to column count minus 1, and the other one is uh, 0 to row count minus 1. Obviously, it's going to be a different um, uh, variable, loop variable, so that's, we're just going to call j. Good. Oops. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, now what we are going to do is our column count is the i, so the the cell is still going to be i plus 1, but the row is now going to be 10 plus j. And, uh, and now, instead of get column titles, we need to get, get row... What was it? Get cell value. Get cell value. And um, so we already have that. So this piece of the code, which returns the um, the ID or the string ID of the column. So that's all fine. And now we need to add the uh, the row ID, which is simple because it's it's the it's the value j. Uh, the loop value j and just to check again as a return we are getting a string so that's fine because then we can give that uh, string value to a cell and that should an excel should be able to you know paste that into the into the cell so i think it's going to be as simple as that let's give it a run save uh, and then see if it works way it works so Actually, it was simpler than I thought. Well, I, I've done this code before and I saved it in a text file in case I get uh, lost. And actually, you can see that in my previous example, I have done the two um, loops the other way around. So it's the outer loop, the i is the row count, and the inner loop, j, is the column count. But uh, you just change the i's and the j's over. Otherwise, the code is exactly the same. So as you can see, uh, how much is it? Probably 10, 15 minutes. We managed to do all this without knowing much about the um, uh, the object, just by looking at the watch and you know looking at the um, the different um, attributes of the watch and also looking at the the object browser. Uh, we we managed to figure out how that <coughs> object works and what are the methods and the and the uh, and the attributes that we can call to extract the information that we want. And you can see that even this, uh, well, maybe it's not that simple, but it's, even this object has so many different stuff that you can use <coughs> to, to get the data. And, uh, well, not only get the data, but also manipulate the data. So there are stuff which is like, you know, insert row. So if you would use this for, um, you know, if you would have a grid view where you have to maintain that value, you can use the insert views to, to you know, to create new rows in the in the data. And, <clears throat> and not only that, you can get cell values, you can get, you know, the columns, uh, sorry, the colors of the cell, the tool tips, the, uh, you know, the cell type, everything, alignment, and then, you know, pretty much everything that you uh, you can think of about this uh, control. Going back to the code, the code is pretty much complete now. I mean, it doesn't need any more um, stuff. I mean, most of the um, the general framework that I usually use to make sure that the connection is open and we connect to a GUI session has been already implemented in my previous example. So the the really the heart of this extract is is that much of a code. And and again, remember the the comment I made earlier that by making this statement that we are store the, uh, or actually this line, that we store the object in, uh, in a local variable, uh, th uh, this piece of the code, which extracts the column titles and then the content becomes universal. So if you have another transaction <coughs> which uses the exact same grid view type control, um, probably could be some stuff like SE16 or, I mean, there must be uh, loads of transactions we use the same stuff. Um, <clears throat> just create a script where you go into the transaction, you know, set the selection screen, open the document, whatever. Um, come to that, come to that view, click on that view so you get the the code how to get there 
and then replace in this line replace the ID of the of the control uh, here and 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 that's it so you will have another Excel file which can extract the, the content of that grid view in a completely different transaction so this code should be fairly reusable and, uh, and again you don't have to worry about this piece of code because it would it was um, coded in a, in a generic way that it should work with every single you know grid view control just um, make sure that um, when you do this you know put a breakpoint here start the start the script and um, why is it not working okay so um, add the grid view yeah I know why it's not working you need to step one to execute that line so um, uh, add this object uh, add this variable to the to the watch just to make sure that the type is the same as this one so module slash I set grid view target uh, because that is the only object which has the exact same you know methods and properties that we are going to use here otherwise you would get all sorts of errors saying that the object doesn't support this property or method because that's not that object that's a different object but um, hopefully you find it really really useful and um, if you need to do something else other than SM12 you should be able to use this code to um, as a template modify that the, the, those few pieces um, those few lines in the code and and get it to do you know whatever you want in any other transaction so thanks for watching and see you in the next video